Thank you for listening to Liberty Christian Center's podcast. Let's join Pastor Stephen Keller for today's message. Hot dog, man. I love it. I love it. I love, love, love this church. So we've been doing a series. Uh, it's called Free. How many of y'all have been enjoying Free so far? Yeah. Uh, some scripture that we've kind of been using as a launch pad is Galatians 5.1. Let's pull that up. It's pretty simple scripture. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery or a burden of slavery. What do you think this means? Why is it that God has to say, hey guys, it was for freedom? that you've been set free. I submit to you, and what we're going to talk about a little bit here today, is that sometimes we can fall back unto bondage. Now, I'm not talking about, don't freak out, I'm not necessarily talking about your eternal placement, right? I'm not talking about salvation. What I'm talking about is believers. Hey, yo, any believers in the house? We can accidentally... Walk right back in the door of that cage. So, that is why we must, as this scripture says, keep standing firm in our freedom. Okay? Freedom, the experience of freedom, is not a passive state. Did you hear me? The experience of freedom is not a passive state. You have freedom, whether you realize it or not, but the experience of said freedom is not a passive state. It's active. You must keep standing firm in that freedom. Okay? So I'm going to read some scripture to y'all. How many of y'all want to listen to some scripture? Galatians 5. We're going to start in verse 13, and we're going to read this in the Message Bible just because, man, it is so down to earth the way that this is put. Check this out. It says, it is absolutely clear that God has called you to a what? A free life. It is absolutely clear. It is absolutely clear that God has called you to live a free life. Just make sure that you don't use this freedom as an excuse to do whatever you want and destroy your freedom. Rather, use your freedom, you can utilize this freedom, guys, to serve one another in love. Come on, y'all awake? That's big, that's beautiful. Going on, that's how freedom what? That's how freedom grows. Freedom grows in loving servitude to one another. Going on. For everything we know about God's word is summed up in a single sentence. Let's keep going. Love others as you love yourself. That's an act of true freedom. There's a lot of misconceptions about what freedom is. You know what I'm talking about? The previous verse says... Don't use your freedom to go along and do whatever you think you got to do. Some people would think that freedom is the lack of credibility to any person, right? Total isolation would be freedom. (laughs) No, no, sir. Total isolation is the epitome of bondage because you want to know the only person you're going to be living with is yourself. And listen, there ain't a whole lot of freedom in this old fleshy bag without Holy Spirit. But when Holy Spirit came and moved on the inside of us, we became a whole brand new creature. And in that, in living with Him, there is freedom. So it goes on to say that's an act of true freedom. If you bite and ravage each other, hey yo, you ever seen any Christians bite and ravage each other? You want to know? Here's some advice. Cool your jets. Amen? Amen. Now listen, I'm all about getting uh, excited about things that God is doing and that God wants to do. But, but again, don't bite and ravage each other. 
Watch out, because if we do that, in no time at all, you will be annihilating each other. Wow. And where will your precious freedom be then? Reading on. My counsel is this. Live freely. Hey, hey, people, you want, you want to hear the real complexities of this message here today? My counsel is this. Live freely. It's for freedom that you've been set free. Therefore, live freely in loving servitude to others in this vibrant, beautiful relationship that Holy Spirit has come to live in with you. People, come on. So, how do we live freely? Animated and motivated by God's Spirit. Animated and motivated by who? Okay, cool. There's like eight of you paying attention. I said, by who? Okay, there we go. Animated and motivated. What does that mean? To animate means to give life to, right? That's what animations are, right? They're, they're when, when life comes to individual drawings, right? So Holy Spirit takes us from being like some born old, you know, smile, you know, to actually living that out, to actually being animated. And also, not just to be brought to life, because obviously when we receive Jesus as Lord, again, we were brought to life, amen? Born again, Holy Spirit moves in. We are free. But to be motivated in that freedom, to be motivated to move into this life that God has for us. Then check this out. Then you won't feed the compulsions of what? Of what? Selfishness. All right, y'all. We have arrived at the cage of the day. What we're going to be talking about is being free from the cage of selfishness. Okay? Now, the term selfish, let me kind of lay this out for you. Because when we say selfish, I think a lot of the time, uh, we kind of think of it as an intentional, are y'all listening? When we think about selfishness, we think about an intentional kind of malicious attitude. You know? Like if someone's selfish, it's just because they, 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 they kind of suck as a human. You know? Can we be real here? Like you kind of judge someone who's being real selfish, right? It's like, eh, it's just, you're kind of selfish. I don't really like you. Um, now, don't get me wrong, some people are intentionally selfish, and some people are intentionally malicious, you know, and man, pray for those people because they need to see Jesus, amen? But I think that there's a lot of selfishness within the body of Christ that we don't even necessarily recognize as selfishness. Now, if we got really, really, really basic, selfishness means to be self-focused, right? Not considering others, whether that be God or people. So two of the ways that I think, personally, and not, I don't even think, I know this to be true, two of the most nasty, sneaky little manifestations of selfishness would be insecurities. Hello? <laughs> anybody, anybody got any insecurities? Yeah? Yeah? Okay, no, I'm just a pastor up here. All right. Or fears. Now, why, why is this selfish? Because if selfishness is defined as a, an, an only me mentality, let me, let me explain to you what insecurities are. Insecurities are thinking of yourself without God's influence. Do you hear me? Insecurities are thinking of yourself outside of God's influence. God's influence is the only thing that can make you secure, whether that be in your, your physical appearance. How many people here beat themselves up about their physical appearance sometimes? Okay, cool. Five of us. Man, y'all are doing good. Maybe, maybe God just had me study this message for my own self. I said, how many of y'all... Have ever been insecure about your looks? Huh? Okay, cool. Thank you. Let's, let's be real here. Amen? 
Now listen, whether it looks like that, where, where do we get these standards? I mean, does God want us healthy? Yes, absolutely. But all of these standards, they come from totally non-godly mentalities. God made your face! Yeah, that thing right here, God made it. If you ever catch yourself, like, bagging on somebody, like, sometimes, I'm sorry, babe, I'm selling you out, you know, but, like, sometimes, it's, it's just, honestly, I see women, sorry for the generalization, but I see women kind of pick on each other's faces, or their own faces, honestly, that's more than what I'm getting at, you know, but we, like, compare our noses to other noses, and eyes to other eyes, and mouths to other mouths. Listen, if you had everybody else's mouth, that'd be a really boring everybody else's mouth. God made you as an individual. He made your face the way he wanted your face. So stop it. Just stop it. Stop comparing yourself to everybody else. Your security should be in the Lord, and the Lord made your face. So come on. But some of these insecurities, they go much further than just our, 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 our physical appearance. Some of our insecurities, man, they're, they're just rooted in things that, that God has totally set us free from. So, insecurity. That's thinking about yourself without God's influence. Fears. What are fears? When you're fearing something, what are you doing? You're thinking about your future without God's influence. Isn't that what you're doing? Otherwise, you have a really jacked up image of God. If you're looking out at your future and fearing God's influence, well then, hey, open up the Bible. Come on. Open up to the New Testament where you see Jesus, the perfect expression of God. Take a look at him. You won't be afraid of him. You will be in awe of him, reverential fear, but you will not be afraid of his influence on your life. You will be excited by that. So I think those are the two sneakiest manifestations of selfishness. Now the reason those things are so sneaky and so destructive is because what do they do? They hold you back. Come on, church, weren't we called to shine as lights? Weren't we, weren't we called to shine in the world? But listen, if, if, if we're jumping in the cage ourselves, the cage of all of our insecurities and fears, uh, cowering in the corner, listen, that is not going to be, one, experientially good for you, and two, nobody wants to serve a God whom that person serves in the first place. So, like, I don't really want to live like that. I don't want some boxed-up, constipated Christianity. No, thank you. Like, come on. When we're all tense and, huh, huh, huh. no, that's not what God has for you. God has called you to live a free life. It's for freedom that he set us free. Therefore, stand firm in that freedom. Do not passively fall into godless mentalities about yourself or about your future or about those who are around you. Is that okay? Okay. Somebody thinks it's good. So selfishness, if we really, really, really got down to it, I would define selfishness as a godless perspective. A godless perspective, okay? Um, a synonym for that is how many of y'all have ever heard of the flesh? The flesh. You ever heard of that? Yeah? No? Um, what is the flesh? What is the flesh? You know, I mean, when I first read that stuff, I was like, the flesh versus the spirit? What is the flesh? Is it like some old fallen nature? I don't know what it is. You know, you try to get real theological about it. You know, flesh is lifeless body. Who brings life? God's spirit. Amen? So flesh is living like God's spirit isn't in us. Flesh is living like Holy Spirit has not come to live inside of you. And the problem with that is, is the truth is Holy Spirit is in you and with you and wants to show you things and, and move you to do things in your realm of influence that you would never do heaped up with all that insecurity and all that fear. But if we think we are all alone in our corner, then we're never going to get up and do anything, are we? But if we realize, hey... 
The Spirit of God is in me and with me. And He's the one who's showing me to do these things. And He's the one who's going to equip me to walk these things out. I'm telling you what, that changes the whole game. If there is any defeated form of Christianity, is because we have not realized the influence of Holy Spirit. Do you hear me? Remember, listen, when you guys, if you ever are just in a, in a mode of beating yourself up, I feel like there's got to be somebody here that's just super discouraged today, because if you're ever in a mode of just beating yourself up, I want to tell you, stop thinking about yourself in that moment. Think about Jesus, okay? Is that very practical? Yes. Is that very useful? Yes. Because in turn, eventually, what will happen is you start to think about Jesus, Holy Spirit. What he does is he makes the things of Jesus real to you. That's like part of his job description. You want to see it in Scripture? I'll show you. First of all, let me show you in Scripture that the Spirit of God brings freedom. 2 Corinthians 3.17 Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty, that word means freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You don't have to come to this building to experience freedom. But we call this church Liberty because we want you free. We, it, it, Holy Spirit manifesting himself here will set people free. But wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So the, wouldn't the question be, where, where, where is Holy Spirit? Okay, let me show you this. 1 Corinthians 3.16. <laughs> Do you not know? If you don't know this, you ought to know this. Do you not know that you, everybody say me, me. say I, I, am a temple of Holy Spirit? What does that mean? What does that mean? Some of y'all have heard me teach about this, but then we forget that we're a temple. I think one of the most crucial things to remind ourselves is that God himself resides within you. God himself is always with you. Always. So in the midst of your trial, tribulation, circumstances, discouragement, whatever, just hit the pause button and go, God, I know you're with me. Speak the name of Jesus. If it'll help you open up the Bible, but if you're going to open up your Bible, you know what you need to do? You need to ask Holy Spirit to show you some stuff. Otherwise, you might just get really confused. So, Check this out. Jesus said something really cool in John 8. John 8, verses 31 through 32. Check this out. Jesus said this. If you continue in my word, then you're truly disciples of mine. Verse 32. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you what? Free. What makes you free? Really? Really? Is it just the truth that you know? Thank you. The truth alone is great, but the truth alone will not experientially free you. You want to know who does that? Yeah, right? Holy Spirit, right? The, the problem with this portion of Scripture is what a lot of us tend to do you know, and, and don't get me wrong, you don't have to like always actively go, Holy Spirit, I know you are with me, now I'm going to read my Bible, thank you. But what we ought to do is we ought to remember that when we read Scripture, we are not reading alone. Never read the Bible by yourself. Is that okay? Is that good advice? Now I'm not saying you need me there. Goodness gracious, I might just confuse you all the more. You know, I'm not saying you need anybody. You don't need your husband or your wife. Sometimes that's a beautiful thing to do, you know. But again, sometimes that's just downright distracting. But it shouldn't just be you either. When you read your Bible, you ought to be reading that with Holy Spirit. 
Why? Because let's check this out. John chapter 16, verse 13 is where we're going to start. I always think it's 14, but we'll start in 13. It says this, But when he, the spirit of what? What sets you free? Knowledge of the truth. So knowing Holy Spirit and knowing Jesus Christ personally and experientially, that's what sets you free. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. Now, when we see continue in the word in John 8, 31 and 32, when we see that continue in my word, then you'll be disciples indeed, right? You cannot continue in God's word without his strength and power by Holy Spirit. That instruction is not just to read more scripture. To continue in something means to continue it through. So when God shows you something in the word, when God shows us something individually, we continue in that by what? Walking it out. Right? It's not just read more scripture and you'll be more free. If you do that by the power of Holy Spirit, yeah, that'll be a fruit of it. But scripture alone will not do that. Holy Spirit takes scripture and reveals Jesus to us. It's a beautiful thing. It goes on and says, For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will what? Disclose to you what is to come. 14. He will glorify me. You see, some people think that when we talk about Holy Spirit this much, that we're like, uh, well, what about Jesus? Holy Spirit's the one that brings real glory to Jesus. So we ought to talk about him a little bit. Because in turn, by talking about him and by following him and by letting him show us some things, disclose some things to us, that's how real glory is brought to Jesus. Not empty amens and hallelujahs, but real, so be it, by the power of God. Real stuff. So he will glorify me. Again, this is Jesus saying this. He's saying, Holy Spirit will glorify me, for he will take of mine and disclose it to you. What does disclose mean? If you look it up, disclose means to make known. That's what it means. Now, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Who helps you know the truth? The spirit of truth. Amen? This might seem really basic, but this is really important. This is what equips us to actually live in this freedom, is a relationship with Holy Spirit. This is important, okay? Let's look at some more scripture. Let's start to talk about uh, what Holy Spirit does for us. It's so tremendous. In Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 2 is where we're going to start. Check this out. It says, with the arrival of Jesus, I'm just going to kind of lay, out, lay it out for you a little bit. With the arrival of Jesus the Messiah, that fateful dilemma is resolved. Now, Romans 7 is talking about like, I want to do this, but I can't do this, and I do what I don't want to do, and I can't do what I don't want to do, and I want to do it, but I can't, and I shouldn't, and blah, 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 blah. But it's saying that that fateful dilemma is resolved now. Those who enter into Christ's being here for us, no longer have to live under a continuous, low-lying, black cloud. <laughs> Come on! How many of y'all have ever been hanging out under a continuous, low-lying, black cloud? You know? People just talk real. Or you just, and this is real, like, like, I, I have to kind of apologize because I don't mean to make fun of you. We've all been here. Every single one of us. You might look around, you might look at the people around you and think like, oh yeah, they're just happy, chipper old, that person, you know. Every single person has dealt with this low-laying black cloud. But the beautiful thing is, is we no longer have to live under it. You no longer have to live under that cloud. Why? Because a new power is in operation. The spirit of life in Christ, like a strong wind, has magnificently cleared the air, freeing you 
from a faded lifetime of brutal tyranny at the hands of sin and death. Now, I know that the message elaborates, but listen, you can look this up in any other translation, and you will see that this is what it's getting at. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. What does the law of sin and death look like? The law of sin and death looks like a continuous, low-laying, black cloud hovering over you. You feel like there is no escape. I want to tell you, there is an escape. There's a whole new program, y'all. Let's go on. We're going to go to 5, verses 5 through 8, just for the sake of time, honestly. <laughs> I love this. It says, those who think that they can do it on their own, those who think that they can get out from under this cloud of sin and death on their own, they end up obsessed with measuring their own moral muscle, but never get around to exercising it in real life. Is that not true? You know, I don't want to, and, and don't get me wrong, there's a time, um, you need you and God time, Okay? You need to be encouraged, refreshed, edified by Holy Spirit, comforted, all of that stuff. So I don't say any of this at the expense of you experiencing God. But if we were going to be real, how many of us are spending our time isolated from the world, getting to know God in self-help mode without it driving us to do anything of actual exercise? I don't want to sit in the corner reading books about God when God has told me to get out and love people. I'm saying this to me too. We are all on this journey. I, but I, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to just know all of this stuff unless this stuff is going to do something, and the only way any of this stuff is going to do anything is if I remember that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death to lovingly serve others through faith. Or through faith in, through love, whatever it is. It's in the original language it talks about that, but it's beautiful. Serving others by the power of the spirit of God. Reading on says that those who trust God's action in them find that God's Spirit is in them. Living and breathing God. Obsession with self in these matters is a dead end. Listen, sitting and obsessing over yourself is a dead end. You were dead without God, so why you keep going back there? Remember, you're with Him. And you know what that leads to? That leads to an open, spacious, free life. If you look up the definition of, of life in the original language, life, it's talking about Zoe life, and it's huge. Zoe life is authentic, genuine, real, huge, vigorous life. It's the kind of life that God has for us. It's not sit back, can like this. It's like this. Next portion. Focusing on the self is the opposite of focusing on God. Isn't that good? Focusing on the self is the opposite of focusing on God. Anyone completely absorbed in self ignores God. Wow. Wow ends up thinking more about self than God. That person ignores who God is, and God isn't pleased at being ignored. God didn't save you so that you could give him the cold shoulder. Amen? God saved us so that we could live in a life with him, live in relationship with him, and that's a tremendous, beautiful thing. So lastly, just the last little thing that I, I know that God will do for you, those of you who are wrangling with the various manifestations of selfishness. 
Uh, if you look in Galatians 5, later on in the chapter, it talks about the deeds of the flesh. All right, again, you could look at that and call those things deeds of selfishness, of godlessness. All right, and they don't look too good. I'm just going to be real with you. They're not real pretty. Okay, so open up your Bible. You can look at those things and go, am I experiencing any of these things? Well, maybe the issue is then that as in Galatians 5, or verse 16, let's pull that up. This is the easy solution. Life isn't that hard, y'all. You don't have to wrangle with your selfishness. You don't have to wrangle with your sin. Walk by the Spirit. Is it this easy? It's this easy. Walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. Walk by the Spirit. A lot of people, you know, as a preacher sometimes, what you hear is you don't preach enough about sin. You know, I, I, I've heard that. And you want to know what? I, I'm called to preach about Jesus. That's what I'm called to preach about. You can try to tell me to preach about whatever you want to try to tell me to preach about, but I'm going to preach about Jesus. I'm going to preach about Jesus coming to sinners. And the emphasis ought to be on the loving God who sets us free from all of the garbage, right? But I don't want to sit around and talk about your sin. Because what does that do? It magnifies it. If you, want me to sit around, if you want me to sit up here and tell you about the desires of your flesh, you know what it's going to do? It's just going to stir them up. But if I start to tell you that Holy Spirit is in you, He is your strengthener, He is your empowerment, He is the only one that can legitimately lead, lead us into a life free from these nasty manifestations of selfishness, then that empowers you. That empowers you. So I suggest to you here today, please, don't ever consider yourself alone. You're not. You're not by yourself. You're not. Holy Spirit is there with you, always. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. And in the midst of all of the stuff, just realize this. Maybe I need to get my eyes off of myself. Maybe I need to get them on God. And invite Holy Spirit, because if, if you don't invite Holy Spirit into this equation, you're just going to beat yourself up for beating yourself up in the first place which is a hot cyclical mess. We don't want you there. We want you in the freedom of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you for listening to Liberty Christian Center's podcast. To partner with this ministry or for any additional information, please visit libertychristiancenter.org.